am a CEO of Shishan. I am working as a civil servant, CSE Department of Malayalam Engineering College, and I am here to teach you the concept of functional programming. Functional programming. So functional programming is the process of building the software. Functional programming is the process of building the software with the help of pure functions. So we are building the an application or building the software with the help of pure functions. So what is a function? What is a function? Function is nothing but it is a piece of code or it is a block of code which is going to perform certain kind of functionality. So our pure functions which are part of the application are what? They are functions. They are functions. So function is nothing but it is a block of code or piece of code which is going to perform certain kind of functionality. So if you look into the need of this particular functions concept, so I will give you an example. I will, uh, I will discuss uh, a general example. So if I am taking a problem, if I am taking a problem, so problem can be solved. Problem can be solved in one way. Problem can be solved in one go. Is one approach. Problem solved in one go. The whole problem is solved in one go. Is one approach. So it is one style of providing solution to a problem. So another style of solving the problem is so divide the problem into multiple number of sub problems. Divide the problem into the number of sub problems. Divide the problem into the multiple number of sub problems. So here I am taking sub problem one, sub problem two, sub problem three, sub problem four. Problem divided into multiple number of sub problems. So here. In this particular approach, we are not providing the solution to this particular problem in one go. So what we are trying to do, we are dividing the problem into multiple number of sub problems. So here I am dividing the problem into four number of sub problems, and we are providing solution to each and every sub problem. So solution given to solution given to sub problem one, solution given to sub problem two, solution given to sub problem three, solution given to sub problem four. So when I am giving solution to each and every sub problem, which is part of the problem, indirectly we are providing what solution for the whole problem. So providing of solution for each and every sub problem is giving what is giving the solution for the whole problem. So it's another way of solving the problem. Now when I am comparing these two approaches, when the first approach is compared to the second approach. So when I am going with the first approach, here we are seeing lot of lot of complexity levels. Lot of complexity levels are seen when problem is solved in one go. Lot of complexity levels are seen. Lot of complexity levels are seen when the user is solving the problem in one go. But when the problem is divided into multiple number of sub problems, when I am providing solution to each and every sub problem, so there the level of complexity levels. So the complexity levels are getting reduced. Complexity levels are reduced. Complexity levels are reduced when I am going with the second approach. So by dividing the problem into sub problems. So this is one major difference between what the first approach and the second approach. So in the first approach, complexity levels are high. In the second approach, complexity levels are low. So uh, one more difference what we can discuss is so this whole problem is solved by one user. But when I am going to the second approach, so what I can do is I can divide this problem into four number of sub problems. Four number of sub problems. Each sub problem can be given to each user. So each sub problem is given to one user. So one sub problem, sub problem one is given to one user. Sub problem two is given to one user. Sub problem three is given to one user. Sub problem four is given to one user. So, how many number of users are involved here? Four number of users are involved. So, within short span of time, within less span of time, we are going to get the solution. So, when the problem is a complex problem, 
So when I'm giving solution with the help of first approach, so there we are seeing what lot of complexity in it. But the same complex problem is divided into sub problems. Automatically, the complexity levels are getting reduced. And one more thing is, so here we are dividing the and when we are dividing the problem into multiple number of sub problems. When sub problems are given to multiple number of users for solving the problem, so automatically the time taken to solve the problem will be reduced. So within less span of time, within less point, within less span of time, we are going to get a solution for a problem. So that's the need of what the second approach. So if you compare the two approaches, which approach is the best one or the better option? So the second approach is the best option when we people are dealing with the complex problems. So if something goes wrong with the sub-problem 2, so we were not focusing upon the sub-problem 1 or sub-problem 3 or sub-problem 4. Simply we will be focusing only upon the sub-problem 2. But if something goes wrong with the first approach, if something goes wrong with the first approach, the whole solution has to be very bad. But it won't be happening with the second approach. So if I am facing some problem with the second, second sub-problem, so they are not focusing upon the sub-problem 1 or sub-problem 3 or sub-problem 4. Simply I am focusing upon the sub-problem 2 as some sort of issue or, or seen with what? Sub-problem 2. As some sort of issue was taking place uh, in sub-problem 2 because of that reason, I will be focusing only upon the solution on solution that is provided for the sub-problem 2. But not upon the other solutions which are given for the sub-problem 1 or sub-problem 3 or sub-problem 4. So this is the, this is achieving what? This is achieving the concept of modularization. So problem divided into sub-problems. The whole software is divided into one. So the whole software is divided or sorry. So by developing, uh, by developing the software with the help of a programming language like C, if I am concerned with the help of programming language like C. Let us assume the requirement of the customers as performing arithmetic operations upon two numbers. Performing arithmetic operations upon two numbers. So if I consider performing arithmetic operations on two numbers, so I can consider addition operation, subtraction operation, multiplication operation, division operation, modulus sort of operation. So this assume these are the operations which I have to uh, perform upon the numbers. So if I am including the addition logic, multiplication logic, division logic, modulus logic as part of one function. So if I am writing the whole logic as part of uh, one function, so assume that main function is the uh, function, so where I am writing the whole logic related to what? Performing of arithmetic operations on the numbers, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus and division. So all the five operations related logic is written inside of one function. Suppose if uh, subtraction logic is not working properly, if subtraction operation is not working properly. So what I have to do? I have to find the faulty logic available within, available within the code. So to find the faulty logic available within the code, so I will start verifying the logic starting from the first line of the code to the last line of the code. As it is a simple program which consists of some 10 to 12 lines of code. So verifying the faulty logic is consuming very less amount of time. But if you consider the real-time applications, so if I am not following the concept of modularization, modularization, what happens there? So if the whole logic, whole logic is written inside of one function, let us suppose if it is having some 10,000 lines of code, so if something goes wrong, if something goes wrong, to find the faulty logic, so user, the programmer has to find the faulty logic starting from the first line of code to the last line of the code. So if it takes some 10 days of time for finding the faulty logic. Assume if the file size goes bigger, that means uh, uh, if, if the code is having some lag lines of code. To find the faulty logic, again it takes what? More amount of time. So if I am going with this kind of approach, finding the faulty logic will become what? It becomes complex, it takes more amount of time. But when I am dividing the problem into 
the multiple number of sub problems and providing solutions to these sub problems. So at the time of at the time of some sort of uh, rounding goes away in the logic. So I, I will now focus upon all the solutions of the sub problems. So wherever we are finding some kind of problem with the sub problem, so that kind of sub problem solution is defined by the user. That means here we are writing in terms of functions. So what I am going to do, I am going to write the logic for addition in one function, logic for subtraction in one function, logic for multiplication in one function, for division in one function, modulus in one function. So when I am doing like this, so if something doesn't work properly, assume that if multiplication functionality is not working fine. Now I am not going to search for the faulty logic from the first line of the code to the last line of the code. So instead what I am going to do as multiplication logic is not working fine, directly I am going to the definition of the multiplication function, then I will verify the logic of the multiplication function, I will make necessary modifications such that logic will work. So if something goes wrong, if something goes wrong, to modify it or to rectify it, so it takes less amount of time when I am following the approach of what? The second approach. So dividing the problem into the number of sub problems. So here, what we are doing, we are writing the logic for addition operation in one function. So defining the logic of subtraction in one function, defining the logic of multiplication in one function, multiplication logic in one function, division logic in one function, modulus logic in one function. If something goes wrong, so I am not searching for the quality logic from starting, starting from the first line of the code to last line of the code.